So welcome everyone to this episode and I want to let you know that I will read my blog out loud, but this blog is a bit older. So I'm talking about my experience with the Mind Eye Institute and I wrote this blog only one month after wearing my glasses. And right now I already have my glasses for about nine months. So I will give you an update soon. So please keep in mind, this is only one month after wearing my glasses. So let me start. My appointment at the Mind Eye Institute. One month after wearing my first therapeutic glasses. Because of COVID, I had to wait so long before I was able to fly all the way from Amsterdam to Chicago to visit the Mind Eye Institute. I already paid for my appointment. So from the moment the borders opened again in the beginning of November 2021, I was able to go there and schedule my appointment on November 24th. I was so excited. Finally, there I went on my way to the airport to fly to Chicago. I was so happy that I could finally visit Dr. Deborah Zelinski at the Mind Eye Institute. I had already heard so many amazing stories from people who had gone to see her. Because my eyes are the biggest problem as of a result of my concussion at the moment, it felt like this was the best step for me to take. Because I didn't want to be away for a long period from home, I just booked three nights at the Sheraton Hotel in Northbrook. They have special prizes for people who are visiting the Mind Eye Institute and a free shuttle which will take you to the clinic. Just a five minute ride. What are my symptoms? What have I done so far in the Netherlands? My accident was four and a half years ago and my eyes have always been an issue since that moment. In the beginning, I didn't know much about it and I only focused on the cognitive stuff. I went to cognitive ethics in Utah, which helped me a lot. Eyes and concussion. But after going there, I even noticed that my eyes were a big problem. I have difficulty focusing and reading and screens are the worst. They suggested that I visit an optometrist in the Netherlands. So I went to Hans de Bruyne as a recommendation from them in Haarlem, the Netherlands. He did a lot of concussion eye tests and I started with light therapy in 2019 and this took a few months. After light therapy, I started with eye training, which means I had to visit him once a week to do all kinds of exercises and I had to continue them at home every day. I did this for almost nine months until I reached a point where I didn't feel any improvements from that anymore. Yoked prism glasses. After their light therapy and eye training, he prescribed yoked prism glasses for my fixation disparity and my midline shift, which came out of a test after all the therapy. Don't ask me why they didn't mention this earlier. The prism glasses helped a bit, but they made me so nauseous all the time. And after wearing them for three months, I decided to stop. The thing I noticed was that my sound sensitivity improved after wearing the glasses. Why did I choose to go to the Mind Eye Institute? I discussed with my optometrist in the Netherlands about the treatment at the Mind Eye Institute. He recommended this place as my therapy here in the Netherlands has come to an end after more than a year. It felt like there were no options left for me here in the Netherlands. I tried everything that was available here and still had issues with my eyes after sustaining my concussion. I had already gone to Cognitive FX in Utah in 2019, which helped me a lot. And this, the Mind Eye Institute, was another treatment option in the United States. The appointment day at the Mind Eye Institute. There was just one long appointment scheduled, so I only needed to visit the clinic one time. That appointment took around three to four hours with lots of breaks in between. You have the option to book your appointment with the Boris Zelinski or with someone else. Well, because I flew all the way from Amsterdam to Chicago, I wanted to see the Boris Zelinski yourself. You will pay more for that appointment. The first test were some general concussion eye tests done by her colleagues. These were some reading tests, the right eye test, cognitive tests, 
memory tests, and some tests on their computer. This took around one and a half hours. They told me I ran through them quickly, so I had to wait or take a break for an hour before I would see Dr. Zablinski. I went outside for a walk and waited until I could see her. The appointment with Deborah Zelinski. After that break, I finally had my appointment with Dr. Deborah Zelinski. I had heard so many things about her and her treatment that I was surprised how normal she was. She is such a caring person and is really passionate about what she's doing. She really wanted to find a problem by doing all kinds of tests. The outcome of the general concussion test. She first checked my story, the outcome of the general test, and explained to me how some things worked. I made a photo of what my biggest problem is. And in case you want to see this photo, just click on the link in the description of this podcast. She told me that these things, awareness and focus, were not working together for me. When I focus, I don't see all things around me. And when I try to focus on the things around me, I miss the object. That explains why I usually get nauseous in a car. Everything is just passing so fast because I try to focus on the road before me. In a general test, I had to read a small story, remember the story, and make a drawing about that story. I made that drawing perfectly with all the details, like trees, hills, people, but totally missed the most important point that a person was carrying a body. She said that's because I zoomed in on the focus part, which erases my awareness of the bigger picture. It's so interesting. The reason why my eyes are always tired is because it costs so much energy to switch between these two things all the time. It's like a camera that's focusing all the time on objects to make a clear view. And that's exactly how it felt. Testing done by Deborah Zelinski. After discussing these things, she started to do some tests herself. I had different glasses with different colors. For example, I had to wear a green one and she was holding something. Then I had to close my eyes and needed to touch the thing she was holding. I had to try this with more colors so she could measure which one was off. Same for the test with the bell. I had to wear different color glasses and instead of holding an object, she was ringing the bell. I had to close my eyes and needed to touch the bell. I remember there was one color where it was totally off, but I also had another color where I was able to touch it every time we tried again. First, I thought it was just a coincidence, but after doing this many times, I was amazed by how this worked. In this way, she knew what colors I need in my glasses where my brain is not functioning well and I have to pick it up again. For the bell test, another color was off. She had to test how I reacted to use both of these colors in the glasses. And in the end, she made her choice. So there are prism in the glasses, but also colors, which you don't notice. The testing and explanation from her made me feel like I made the right choice to book that appointment directly with her. I think the others are amazing as well, but this felt right for me to do so. Start with Syntonix for three weeks. After my appointment with Dr. Boris Zelinski, I had my last appointment with the optometrist who would discuss my glasses. I brought my own frame and he did some small measurements. He explained everything. I had to wear them for six months and build it up slowly. The first three weeks I needed to start with Syntonix. These are color glasses and you wear them for a short period of time. I had to use these glasses for the coming week in the following way. In the morning, the yellow color for just two seconds, followed by the green and blue one together for five seconds. And in the evening, only the green and blue one together for five seconds. I thought this couldn't do much for just a few seconds, but I was wrong. My eyes really needed to adjust to them. And to be honest, it bothered me a bit. I did this for three weeks only, and I'm not sure if I feel a difference, but I really want to follow her advice. Maybe it has more of a long-term function. Receiving my glasses, two weeks after the appointment, adjusting. 
After the appointment, I flew back to Amsterdam. They told me that I had to wait for three or four weeks, but after two weeks, my glasses arrived. I was so excited and could not wait to start wearing them. They included a letter about how I needed to use my glasses. And in case you are interested to read this letter, I added this letter to my blog. So you can click on the link in the description below this podcast. I needed to build it up slowly. And the final goal is to wear them the full day until you don't need the glasses anymore. So your eyes will learn how to do this themselves. I was really motivated and thought it would be easy to wear them. But I was wrong. The first day I could wear them for five minutes and really needed to take them off after that. The next day I tried it for 10 minutes and that was easy. I was wondering what would happen if I could wear them longer, but I was also a bit scared that it would cause some sort of setback. So I only did it for 10 minutes a day. The third day I wore them for one hour, on the fourth day for two hours and the fifth for three hours. These steps were a bit too big, so I felt really bad in the evening on the fifth day. As they mentioned in the instructions, don't rush your process. I just wanted to move forward more quickly, but if there is one thing I learned in my journey, it is that rushing things never helps. So I started to slow down a bit and I would wear them for one hour a day in the second week. This went well and I started to wear them for one and a half hours in the third week. I increased to two hours in the fourth week. How do I feel after one month wearing the glasses? Right now I have my glasses for one month. As I already mentioned, these are not quick magic glasses that will heal you in a month. It's a whole process of more glasses and can take up to two years. So I guess it's a bit too early to say if this is helping or not, but I just wanted to share my experience so far. What I feel now after having them for a month is that it does something and my eyes are adjusting to them. It feels different because I feel another pressure behind my eyes, different from the one I usually feel. It feels like they will be forced to get back into balance, which is not always easy and not the best feeling ever, but I know what I'm doing, so I will keep building it up every week when I'm able to. I have faith that this will work. At the end of January, I will have a follow-up with the Mind Eye Institute to discuss how it's going so far. I will keep you updated and write another blog when I'm further in this process. Any questions, please reach out to me. I hope this review helps. I want to end this episode by letting you know that I received a lot of questions about what helped me in my journey. To answer all these questions, I wrote an ebook. Inside this ebook, you will read about what seven things helped me the most in my concussion journey. These seven things helped me to reduce my fatigue, to have more energy, to improve my sleep, to feel less stressed, and to be able to exercise again. You can download it for free and receive it right away in your inbox. Click on the link in the description or go to my website, theconcussioncommunity.com. It's the first thing you will see. I hope it's helping you.